We start with a point. Hi, it's Rob Bryanton, and welcome back to the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. More in our series of poll questions. This is a poll that ended on March 25th, 2009. And the poll question was, plants use quantum physics effects in photosynthesis. And this is why it is such an efficient energy conversion process. We asked if people agreed or disagreed. 72% agreed. This was another poll created as a companion to a specific blog entry, in this case, Creativity and the Quantum Universe. That post was inspired by an article published in the February issue of Discover magazine, which really caught my eye. Written by Mark Anderson, it was called Entangled Life. The article is an interesting summary of lab experiments and serious theoretical propositions that suggest plants do use quantum effects to make photosynthesis such an efficient process, and that such effects as entanglement and tunneling could also be imparting unique fragrances to molecules that are almost identical, imparting healing qualities to substances like green tea, and perhaps even directly contributing to consciousness. Essentially then, with this poll question, I was asking whether visitors agreed with the suppositions advanced in Mark Anderson's article and reported in my blog, and I'm pleased to see how many were willing to agree with this idea. While well, I would encourage you to go back and read my blog entry, and that Discover Magazine article mentioned above, let me underline the interesting parallel I suggested back then. Now here is a paragraph from that Discover Magazine article, first of all. Instead of haphazardly moving from one connective channel to the next, as might be seen in classical physics, energy traveled in several directions at the same time. The researchers theorized that only when the energy had reached the end of the series of connections could an efficient pathway retroactively be found. At that point, the quantum process collapsed and the electron's energy followed that single most effective path. And then let's look at my paraphrased version to show how creativity might also be a quantum process. Instead of haphazardly moving from one idea to the next, as might be seen in work that has no focus, creative ideas travel in several directions at the same time. By simultaneously exploring a set of connections, the eureka of a new inspiration can be found. At that point, the exploration process has collapsed, and the creative person follows the new idea that they find most inspiring. Several weeks later, in our non-local universe, I continued the discussion of how our world is connected together in hidden ways that transcend the limited now of space-time, and how the principle of non-locality is an accepted fact in mainstream science. With this project, I am insisting that this non-locality is direct evidence of extra dimensions, and that a great many other seemingly mysterious processes can also be understood when we see how the information that underlies our reality exists in additional dimensions. I find it fascinating that this timeless perspective is gaining ground, as more and more people accept that our universe is just one of a multiverse of many other universes, and that perhaps all of those universes and multiverses might be assembled into one perfectly balanced underlying symmetry state, which physicist Tim Palmer has recently called the invariant set, and which I and others have referred to as the omniverse. Which leads back to the parallels I drew above, between the accepted viewpoint that our universe is non-local, between scientific evidence that plants use non-local effects for photosynthesis, and my notion that all life is a creative process, and which means that creative processes are non-local. While 79% agreed with the non-local nature of photosynthesis being what makes it so efficient, I wonder how many visitors to this blog would be willing to follow me further out on that same limb if I were to rewrite the poll question in the same way that I rewrote the above paragraph. What if I were to ask for agreement or disagreement on this statement? Life uses quantum physics effects, such as tunneling and entanglement, to engage with reality outside of space-time. And this is true of all creative processes. For me, this statement logically follows, and is a very important part of understanding the way of visualizing the dimensions that I'm exploring with this project. As I say in my book, and have repeated in this blog, 
I would define life as any process that is interested in what happens next. In other words, that finds ways to use the non-local nature of our universe to allow itself to thrive and continue. That would be just as true of the first chemical reactions that became the seeds of life in the primordial soup as it is for you and I. Would you agree? We're going to find out because that is the next question that uh, we're posting at the 10th Dimension blog, which will uh, be explored in an upcoming version of this YouTube blog. Next in our series of poll questions we'll be looking at is number 37. The question is, do shamans see other dimensions? That's all for now. From Rob Bryanson, enjoy the journey.